so this the fourth Sunday of Easter is taken from the book of Acts, the sixth and seventh chapter. In those days when the number of disciples was increasing, the Grecian Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. And so the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word in order to wait on the tables. Brothers, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them, and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Procorisus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. And they presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of the Lord spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, did great wonders and miraculous signs among the people. Opposition, however, arose from members of the synagogue of the freemen, as it was called, Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as the provinces of Sicily and Asia. And these men began to argue with Stephen. To this, he replied, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. You stiff-necked people with uncircumcised hearts and ears, you are just like your fathers. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your fathers did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. You who have received the law that was put into effect through angels, but have not obeyed him. When they heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of him. Look, he said, I see heaven open, and the Son of Man, sta of, the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And at this, they covered their ears, and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city, and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against me. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, 
so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is taken from St. John's Gospel, the 10th chapter, the beginning of the first verse. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all, all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus uses figures of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. In American folklore, we have the cowboy. He rides his horse as he guides cattle on the cattle drive to market. And in biblical folklore, we have the shepherd. He walks ahead of his sheep as he guides them to be sheared. And as for the cowboy, he reads, rears his horse to a stop on the rim of a canyon. As he shifts his weight in his saddle, weary from the cattle trail, one finger pushes up his hat on his head, and the other, and with a jerk of the kerchief, reveals his sun leather face. A thousand head of cattle pass behind him, and a thousand miles of trail lie before him. A thousand women would love to hold him, but none do. None ever will. He lives to drive cattle, and he drives cattle to live. He's honest in poker, quick with a gun, hard riding, slow talking. His best friend is his horse, and his strength is his grit. He needs no one. He is a cowboy, the American hero. And now behold the, a biblical hero, the shepherd. On the surface, he may appear similar to the cowboy. He too is rugged. He sleeps where jackals howl and works where wolves prowl. Never off duty, always alert. Like the cowboy, he makes his roof the stars, and the pasture his home. But that's where the similarities end. You see, the shepherd loves his sheep. And it's not that the cowboy doesn't appreciate the cow, it's just that he doesn't know the animal. And really, he doesn't want to. Have you ever seen a picture of a cowboy caressing a cow? Well, I, I haven't either. And I'm sure you've all seen pictures of the shepherd caring for the sheep, either holding it in his arms or over his shoulders. So why the difference? Well, it's rather simple. The cowboy leads the cow to slaughter. The shepherd leads the sheep to be shorn. The cowboy wants the meat from the cow, but the shepherd wants the wool off the sheep. So they treat their animals a little different. The cowboy drives cattle, and the shepherd leads sheep. And a herd may have dozens of cowboys, 
but a flock generally has one shepherd. The cowboy wrestles, brands, herds, and ropes, and the shepherd leads, guides, feeds, and anoints. The cowboy whoops and hollers at the cows. The shepherd calls each by their name. And aren't we glad that Christ didn't say he was the good cowboy? <laughs> Our gospel lesson is about Jesus as the shepherd of the sheep. And in this lesson, Jesus is telling us that he is the door to the sheep. And whoever goes in and out has to go through him. The shepherd in Jesus' day would find either a natural place, a natural sheepfold to house his sheep for the night, or he would build one out of rocks and stone and, and wood. But he would be the door to that fold. You see, he would lie down in, in the opening so that the sheep could not escape and wild animals could not get in. And Jesus is the door to the sheepfold of salvation. And it is through him that we must pass in order to receive salvation. Just like our text says, So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. I, all who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not keep them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundant. Jesus is the doorway to salvation, for us, as the shepherd, is the doorway to the sheepfold, to protect the sheep so that they can go in and out and find pasture. Now, Jesus is no cowboy driving his flock without care for the individual sheep. But Jesus is the good shepherd, leading his flock as he calls each of us by name to salvation he bought to us through the cross and resurrection. And isn't, isn't it great that we have this good shepherd to lead us and not a cow? The good shepherd cares for each member of his flock, and he knows each of them by name. And our salvation comes from this, from a good shepherd who knows his flock. He knows each of our names and leads us to green pastures. And Jesus is like the guide in this story. A traveler was returning home from a journey to a distant country. At nightfall, he arrived at the entrance of a vast forest. Unable to either delay his journey nor retrace his steps, he was prepared to, to traverse the sullen forest when he came upon an old shepherd from whom he asked the way. Alas, cried the shepherd, it is not easy to point out, for the forest is crisscrossed by hundreds of paths winding in every direction. There are almost, they are all almost similar in appearance, though all with one exception lead to the great abyss. What is this great abyss, the traveler inquired? It is the abyss which surrounds the forest replied the shepherd. Moreover, the forest is filled with robbers and wild beasts. In particular, it is ravaged by an enormous serpent, so that we scarcely, as scarcely a day passes that we don't find the remains of some traveler who fell prey to it. Still, the shepherd continued, as it is impossible to arrive at the place where you are going without traversing this forest, I have, through a motive of compassion, stationed myself at the entrance of this forest to assist and direct travelers. I have also placed my sons at different intervals to assist me in this same good work. Their services and mine are at your disposal, and I am ready to accompany you if you desire. And now the candor and venerable appearance of the shepherd satisfied the traveler, and he accepted the uh, invitation. 
The shepherd had a lantern with one hand, and with the other he took the traveler by the arm. They set out on their journey through the dark forest. And after walking some distance, the traveler felt his strength wane. Lean on me, the shepherd said. And the traveler did so and was able to continue the journey. After a while, the lamp began to flicker. Oh no, groaned the traveler. The oil is nearly spent, and the light will soon be gone. What will become of us now? Do not fear, consoled the shepherd. We shall soon meet one of my sons who will supply us with more oil. And just then the traveler perceived a glimmer of light in the distance. The light shone from a small cabin by the side of the narrow path. And at the sound of the shepherd's well-known voice, the cabin door swung open. A seat was offered to the weary traveler, and some plain but substantial food was set before him. And thus refreshed, the traveler set out again, guided by the shepherd's son. And in this manner, the traveler journeyed on for the rest of the night. From time to time, they stopped at different cabins built along the path. At each stop, he obtained refreshment, a bit of rest, and was furnished with a new guide. And with the dawn of daylight, the traveler arrived without incident to the forest's furthest boundary. Only then did he appreciate the magnitude of the service that was rendered to him by the shepherd and his sons. At, every, at the very edge of the forest, right before his feet, lay a frightful precipice. And at the bottom, which could be distinguished the roar of an angry current. And this, his guide said, is the great abyss which my father spoke about. No one knows its depth, for it is always covered with a thick fog which no eye can penetrate. And as he spoke, he sighed a deep sigh and wiped a tear from his eyes. You seem grieved, the traveler said. How can I be otherwise, replied his guide. How can I look at this abyss without thinking about the thousands of unfortunate people who every day are swallowed up in it? And in vain, my father and my brothers offer our services. Very few accept that. And those few, the greater portion after journeying only a little while, accuse us of needlessly alarming them. They despise our advice and set out on paths of their own choosing. And as a consequence, they soon lose their way and are devoured by the serpent, or murdered by robbers, or plunge headlong into this abyss. You see, there is only one little bridge by which this abyss can be crossed, and the way which leads to the bridge is known only to us, so you can pass over with confidence. The guide then turned to the traveler, embraced him and said, on the other side is your home. And now the traveler, overcome with gratitude, thanked his charitable guide and promised never to forget him. He crossed the narrow bridge and discovered he was now in his own home. His family was there and welcomed him. And the question for all of us this morning is whether we <coughs> are willing to be guided over this abyss of life by Jesus the shepherd, or do we go it alone? Are we willing to accept Jesus as the guide for our lives? Are we willing to accept Jesus as the good shepherd who calls us by name? And when we do, Jesus is that good shepherd, and then, takes, and then life takes on a certain peace and rest. Now, that doesn't mean that troubles will no longer come your way, but when they do, we have the Good Shepherd to guide us through. Just as the Father and His sons guided the traveler through the forest and around the great abyss, Jesus, gui give, Jesus guides us and gives us a measure of His peace. And I'd like to close with this poem. 
Are you anxious in the midst of life's problems as you wake up each new day? Do you worry about the past or future or ponder problems that may come your way? There is no reason to fear or falter. We have one who knows and understands. He is there even in the midnight hour. Jesus will calm the storm. He will hold your hand. Jesus still speaks peace to the troubled waters. They will not overtake your soul. The good shepherd cares for his sheep. Our Lord will lead and guide you in the safety of his fold. Jesus speaks peace with the greatest love ever told. He will be there every moment of the day. Worry not about the past or tomorrow. Our Lord is in control. The Savior walks with us and hears us as we pray. Rest in God and let him fight your battles. He knows all things from beginning to the end. Great peace he will bestow as onward you go. Look up to the Savior. He is our dearest friend. Amen. And may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.